Hi everyone, welcome to another portfolio review from Photography Concentrate. I'm Jill Mathis and we are having a look today at the Facebook page that Sabine Oxman from Cody, Wyoming sent in for me to review. Now, judging from Sabine's about page on Facebook, she seems to be setting herself up for working professionally. She does mention weddings and portraits, but that pet photography is her real passion. This Facebook page was the link she posted for this review, and I actually don't know if she has any plans on putting up a website or not. I'm just going to assume that, for now, she's going to stick with Facebook. Now, after looking at all her Facebook images, somewhere over 100 photos, my first suggestion would be, in fact, to cull the best from her timeline photos to start creating a website, or at least a Behance page, and keep the Facebook page current with things like events and notifications and promotional photos to help her friends over at the animal shelter. Sabine's got a lot of super images, and I certainly think that they merit at least a Behance page. Behance, at least in my mind, is more focused on serious work, and from the many pages I've seen, there's a pretty high quality of work shown. I always recommend it as a sort of stepping stone to creating a website since it's free and you can sort of test the temperature of your public before taking on the expense of a website. Facebook, on the other hand, is a more social media free-for-all and from a client's point of view, I'd rather see something more serious. Pet photography is a fairly saturated field, so in order to stand out, it's going to be important to focus on the images in Sabine's page that have that little something different that makes the viewer pause or look twice. Maybe it's an unusual angle like in these photos. Or maybe it's almost a profile lifestyle type of photo or some really unique captures. Whatever it is, Style and innovation are key. There's nothing wrong with a good classic puppy portrait, but to have some staying power as a photographer and the power to charge a sustainable rate for what you do, you have to set yourself apart visually. From Sabine's very latest post, I see she wants to combine her pet photography with a dog training business, which I think is a really great idea. What a super way to always have available clients and their pets to photograph. Since we don't really have enough time to go over all the photos, I'll be skipping the photos from the animal shelter and concentrating on showing some of the best work, talking about why certain photos are stronger than others. Using the top photos to create a dedicated site would be so much more efficient, say when Sabine proposes to do a pet portrait to someone and can just say, have a look at what I do here. Otherwise, directing someone to her Facebook page makes them have to wade through the more snapshot-like photos that are for the animal shelter and other notifications. Sabine's choice of photo for her About section on Facebook is a great example of a good, solid, what I would call lifestyle type photo that I would include in a website. There's a good use of compositional balance here, which sets it apart from this other photo that she also used promotionally. This type of photo, which is technically very strong, is the type that I would avoid on a dedicated site. Besides the abrupt and severe crop cutting off the legs, there's none of Sabine's fun style coming through. Instead, take a look at this photo. The posture is still formal, but Sabine has chosen one of the takes with a cocked head and goofy smile, plus she's done some really top-notch post-production on this photo. It has a real painterly quality to it that is just so lovely. Now another one with the same type of painterly feel is this photo. There's just something about these two that remind me of Courier and Ives prints. They're heartwarming, simple, but elegant. While I know there is a draw to doing studio photos, it's a controlled environment after all, I feel that Sabine's outdoor work far outclasses the examples she's put up from her studio work. Another photo used promotionally along the same lines is this one. 
Here I believe Sabine fell into the trap of concentrating on the beauty of the subject. And Rufus here is a gorgeous subject. And focusing on his eyes without really thinking about photography. Again, still a technically good photo and in a less formal, more pleasing and relaxed setting than the actual studio, but still without anything to set it apart from the general population. Instead, here are two photos with the same type of crop and same type of background that I would most definitely include in a final cut. It's that extra effort and thought and Sabine's playfulness put into the setting that makes these two exceptional. They're just plain fun to look at. Here are two more that I would include on a website. This time though, Sabine's strong sense of composition can really be seen. Such a perfect use of balance with open spaces and that stick in the one photo and his tail in the other. Photos like these, simple as they are, will be the ones that stand out and get Sabine noticed. Another simple photo that just has that little bit extra is this one. Here Sabine uses a classic front and center composition that in another photo might be read as sort of staid, but here she's really played off the dynamics created by the geometric shapes and the complementary color palette. On her Facebook page, she's also included this version, which while not bad, doesn't have the strength of the other one, partly due to the odd posture with the back foot, plus there's less space around the pup, which makes for a rather closed in composition that doesn't really let you appreciate the colors. The off camera stare also in this case is a little bit less appealing. By the way, it's been proven in studies that people relate more to photos where there is eye contact. So that's something to think about when putting together a portfolio for clients. Another thing is that in a professional website, it's important to not be repetitive and show images that are so very close in style and content like these are. It gives a message of indecisiveness on the part of the photographer, something you really don't want a potential client to think. There are times, of course, when you might want to create a sort of storyboard, such as these images that I found on Behance. This is a fun and engaging technique, especially in pet photography, since your subject is usually always in motion. The important thing to keep in mind is to have a reason behind all your decisions on what photos stay and what photos don't. Develop and use your power of editing to make a tight and interesting body of work. For instance, on Sabine's Facebook page, there are these two images which are just too similar to both be included on a website. The vertical one has great light and color, but the crop with the pup on the left is so random that it feels almost like a mistake. Whereas the horizontal photo has so much more going for it. Great colors, and I like the added sun effect, and super balance, and that one more little bit of something different, which is the dogs looking in opposite directions. Something a little bit unusual, which you not only notice, but remember. One thing to always keep in mind is that your portfolio, your website or page is only as strong as the weakest photo. And especially when you put two photos that are similar together, the weaker one is going to diminish the stronger one. At this point, I'm going to include some solid straight up good portraits that include a cute feline and another type of pup to spice up the mix, along with a couple of action shots that are always fun to see. And let's have a look at what a possible website, and in this case, a Behance page, could look like for Sabine. I put the more unusual images right away up front as the first to be seen to make a really good first impression. I wanted to start with this one because it's truly an attention grabber with that gorgeous blue negative space and the very unusual framing. It's one of my favorite photos of all, actually. Then I moved on to the other three really unique images, ending with this gorgeous close-up. I then inserted some of Sabine's strong classic images that I chose for the warm colors that segue from the sepia-tinted nose photo. 
The order was chosen for the way the arch in the chair's arm is then repeated on the other side with the arch formed by created, created by the white towel, making this group a tight layout with a defined beginning and end. Next is a super photo that for me falls under lifestyle. It's a great photo with such an interesting effect created by the water and the negative in the upper right hand corner. I followed it with some other of the same genre, focusing more on just mixing up the color palette and ending with another two of my favorites that have that sort of storyboard effect I mentioned earlier. The next four are grouped together for the Courier and Ives coloring that I like so much. Followed by two more strong classic poses, both with a pop of color to keep the interest going. Since you always want to end with something that will stand out visually and emotionally, I chose this very positive, happy, and fun photo to close the page. Now I hope you can see and feel the difference between the Facebook page and the edited down Behance dedicated page. I think Sabine is a really good photographer and is up there with some of the best ones I saw on Behance while putting together this review. And I looked at a lot of pet pages. Some pages, even professional ones like this one for Purina Foods, for example. On a side note, I never actually put together a Behance page and I found the whole experience really easy and fun. They have it set up for even folks who aren't particularly computer savvy. It's easy to add text and work from Lightroom if you're using that as your photo editor. I think to keep Behance in general a clean and well laid out site. They don't give you many options apart from being able to change the color background. And since I'm sort of a less is more type person, I actually think that's probably a good idea. So guys, that's it for this review. If anyone has any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me through the Mastermind Facebook page and I'll be happy to get back with you. And keep an eye out for the next announcement in case you want to have a review of your own work. Thanks to Sabine for participating and I'll see you guys in the next review.